I'm gonna start this video by making a bold statement. Speedrunning is pretty sick. And one of the many things that makes this hobby so appealing and exciting to me is the fact that an active community will see its speed game in a constant state of change. Glitches are found and strategies are developed on the regular in order to lower the times as much as possible and push the boundaries of what can be achieved by gamers. Sometimes finding a new skip can be as simple as applying current knowledge of a game's mechanics in a previously untested location. But in some cases, a strat can be theorized for years before the actual breakthrough that will make its inclusion in speed runs possible. And as far as Donkey Kong Country 2 is concerned, a great example of a strategy that would not only check that ladder box, but also, ironically enough, the former, is Arctic Zip. Arctic Zip is, at the time of making this video, one of the latest and largest and most significant time saves in DKC2 speedrunning, and speculations and theory crafting around that strategy can be traced as far back as 2015. The reason why it used to be so coveted and talked about? The goalpost in Arctic Abyss is located right above the entrance, and is loaded upon arrival, meaning that on paper, a way to clip through the ceiling could save a tremendous amount of time. Pair this with the fact that Arctic Abyss is a pretty obnoxious and difficult level to optimize and it's not too surprising that the trick essentially got elevated to holy grail status. But despite plenty of trial and error following suit to this idea, the first real breakthrough would only happen in late March of 2020. This YouTube comment by Japanese tasser Hidai Guy, hinting at them having potentially figured out a way to execute the trick, sort of rekindled the quest for Arctic Zip at that point, and no more than two days after the post was brought to light, a DKC2 runner by the name of Gil42 stumbled upon it. Where am I? <gasps> Dude! Whoa! Oh my god. It's real. Gale's setup was a bit primitive and went through a lot of steps that were believed necessary at the time, which resulted in a time save that was almost non-existent for the top DKC2 runners and unreliable to grasp for everybody else. As such, the natural route prevailed. However, a few weeks later, Hidai Guy released their tool-assisted strategy, which reuses some of the elements from Gil's Arctic Zip method while also trimming the fat out of it, resulting in a much more appealing time save. Arctic Zip. Arctic Zip. The community went to work with it and quickly determined that this new setup was not only doable in actual runs, but also much more consistent than the former one. It is in fact, still to this day, the main way of executing Arctic Zip, but what makes this method so much better, and how do you actually pull it off? The main component that makes Arctic Zip a viable strategy is Kong swapping. If you swap your Kongs on land, the game freezes and your Kongs go through a small cutscene that ultimately gives you control over the other Kong. Notice how enemy sprites and other actions are paused in order to give you time to sit through that cutscene and to get used to your new Kongs physics and mechanics. However, if you swap your Kongs underwater, no game pausing will occur, which can lead to unfortunate mistakes if you do not secure your swapping locations, as enemies will still be in motion and can damage you. But for the purposes of Arctic Zip, this is precisely what we're looking for. First things first, you want to swim under that on-guard barrel at the start of the level. The regular strategy in Arctic Abyss would involve getting into that barrel, since navigating through the level as on-guard is the much faster way of clearing it. Conveniently, there is a wide enough gap for you to slide right under the barrel with ease. I've made a video in the past covering version differences in DKC2, and this under the barrel movement is exclusive to the 1.1 version of the game. The 1.0 version would have you swim over the barrel in order to not make contact with it and continue on with your attempt at the zip. Secondly, you want to navigate through the level up to this part, where there's a trigger to raise the water level that you want to hit in order to make backtracking to the required spot possible. Optimizing this trigger grab can save a surprising amount of time, so it is not to be neglected. And thus begins your journey back to the start of the level, except that this time you'll need this lockjaw to tag along with you. This escort mission is by far the hardest portion of Arctic Zip. Despawning the lockjaw is a common mistake amongst DKC2 speedrunners, not to mention its behavior being different if you grab its attention from behind. Handling and baiting the fish with care is a must, as losing a Kong during this part of the trick can be extremely detrimental at best and force you to reattempt the entire strat at worst. And the least amount of lockjaw baits done, the more time you save. The best DKC2 players can get through that section with as little as 8 or 9 lockjaw baits, 
but going for more baits will make it less likely for the logjaw to potentially despawn, and the strat will be safer as a result. It's up to you to strike a balance you feel comfortable with for this section. After making it back past the on guard barrel, the only step to the trick left to do is the Kong swap. The corner of this ice wall right here, right here, is where you want to execute the swap. But here's the twist, and this is where the logjaw we've been luring from across the stage comes into play. You want to time the swap so that your active Kong will be inside that wall and will take damage from the logjaw at that point. That swap is somewhat lenient, but can still easily go awry. Being too early or too late, or not swapping in the proper position, can make you miss the entire damage boost window and cost you a Kong, making backing the trick up very time consuming. But if your timing is just right, the ice wall will push you upwards and put you right next to the exit. At which point you can simply jump out of the wall and onto goalpost. Celebrate as you just pulled off one of the trickiest DKC2 strategies out there, revel in the time you just saved and continue on with your speedrun. And that's it! You now know how to execute Arctic Zip and hopefully impress your friends and family. But there's one question remaining on this matter, one that has seen a great deal of interest over the last year and one that, for some reason, the answer to keeps eluding even the greatest minds of the DKC speedrunning community. We're about to see some zip action. Sadly, yeah. we still do not know how many donkey units it saves. How much time does Arctic Zip save? Uh certain number of donkey units. How much t time does Arctic Zip save? The jury's still out, I'm sorry. Find out how much, please. Let us know. We're struggling. How much time does Arctic Zip save? Today, I am beyond pleased to bring you the results of my finding and the fruits of my labor. The answer to how much time Arctic Zip saves is... Well... It depends. As previously mentioned, the water raising trigger you need to grab, as well as the initial lockjaw lure, are two things you can gain or lose a surprising amount of time on. However, those are pretty minor in comparison to the number of lockjaw baits you decide to go for. An extra bait will be around a second and a half traded for consistency and safety. And of course, it also depends on how good you are at going through Arctic Abyss in the normal fashion. Speaking from personal experience, the level takes me about 53 seconds to complete using on guard strats. But using the zip and a 9 bait setup on the logjaw, I can clear the stage in about 36 seconds. Pulling the strat off also causes a small route deviation in the next stage that has to be taken into account, since you will only have Diddy available with you. So I then subtract to this the time I would normally save in Windy Well, which is a little under 2 seconds, from doing this particular team throw super jump at the start of the level, and I am left with a final time gain of roughly 15 seconds. For some people it will be less, for others it will be more, but if you decide to commit to it in your runs, there is one certainty. This is do or die. Arctic Zip is a strategy with a lot of moving parts, and like many other speedrunning tricks that are part of the Donkey Kong Country trilogy where consistency is the name of the game, messing up the final step will result in a significant time loss over doing the normal route through the level. But at the end of the day, the time gain from it simply cannot be ignored at the top level. And let's not forget that it all started almost as a joke, a wild idea that ended up being concretized through non-stop digging, hard work and dedication, and as a result saw its mark be put on DKC2 speedrunning history. History. It's now been over two years since this huge discovery, and the community is now wondering not only when, but also what the next breakthrough will be. Webwood's wrong warp? <laughs> Just kidding. Unless... Another one in the books, gamers. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Huge shoutouts to these fresh people for helping me out and contributing in one way or another to this video. And if you guys have any suggestions on what DKC strategy I should cover next, make sure to mention it in the comment section. In fact, drop a comment regardless. It would really help your boy out. Take care, gamers, and until next time, keep on rolling deep.